Hello, my friends, and welcome to another episode of the Million Pound Mission Podcast. It's your buddy, Adam, the PhD, the previously heavy dude, and this is episode number 237. We're talking about hashtag future boards with Sarah Centrella. This one's going to knock your socks off, but first, I got to give you a quick heads up. Something awesome is about to happen. Our next free seven-day habit launch challenge launches on June 10th. June 10th, we launch the free habit launch challenge. And this time we're talking about mobility, about self-care, body maintenance. We all want to feel better. We've all got those aches and pains. We want to move better. We want our body to heal quicker from those workouts. So we're going to spend 10 minutes a day. I've got follow along videos. Easy, easy to do. Just tune in, push play on your online course. And then we've got accountability groups set up within the challenge. It's going to be a lot of fun. So you can head on over to www.habitlaunchchallenge.com. Habitlaunchchallenge.com. Again, we start June 10th. You got a few weeks to sign up here and get prepped with the welcome videos with the course. Get all set up in your accountability groups and get ready to launch on June 10th. Habitlaunchchallenge.com. Now, let's dive into this week's special guest. And as you guys know, one of the things that I talk about a lot on this show is that your why has to be bigger than the combined force of all of the why nots out there. So the question I've got for you is, have you ever felt like the why nots are just kicking your ass? All those why nots are piling on and you're having a hard time fighting back and standing up for yourself, right? I'm sure we've all been there. I know I've been there. And today... I'm bringing in this amazing woman who hit rock bottom and then developed a incredible technique called future boards that totally changed the trajectory of her life. Our special guest this week is Sarah Centrella, who's the author of the number one best-selling self-help book, Hustle, Believe, Receive, an eight-step plan to changing your life and living your dream. It's one of my favorite books. All right, you guys got to check that out. And she is known as a premier vision board expert and her follow-up book, which I'm also super excited about, hashtag future boards, how to make a vision board to manifest exactly what you want. That's going to be released in July. So as a master life coach, Sarah has worked with professional athletes and thousands of people from around the world, helping them manifest their dreams. Her story is amazing. Her rock bottom moment is going to blow your mind. All right. It's just one of the toughest stories I've ever heard. And it's going to be very inspirational. So we talk about that in this interview. We also talk about the difference between how she defines a future board versus a dream or vision board and the differences there. We talk about best practices of developing your own future board. And we get her best advice for someone that is ready to reverse their life momentum. All right. You're going to love this one. I was so excited for this interview. I'm so glad Sarah said yes. So I don't want to delay you anymore. Let's dive into episode number 237. Hashtag future boards with Sarah Centrella. All right, Sarah Centrella. Welcome to the Million Pound Mission podcast. How are we doing today, my friend? I'm doing awesome, Adam. Thanks so much for having me on. I'm excited for our chat today. I'm really, really excited about this. I told you before we started recording, this is an interview I've really been looking forward to. I know my this is going to be my audience's jam because there are a lot of similarities to the way that we have both shaped our lives uh, through the way that we think. And I think that this is, uh, you're going to provide so many amazing resources, no pressure, hashtag no pressure, um, <laughs> but we are going to uh, dive right in here and just start the awesomeness. Now, I love your story. And for those of the people that haven't really heard it, I, I, let's start with your rock bottom moment because you had a heap of shit dumped yeah. on you, dumped on you all at <laughs> once, and you rose out of that. So let's start with rock bottom, what that looked like for you. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I I kind of tell people that hitting hitting rock bottom, no one ever wants to get there, right? Um, and you you might think things have gone bad in your life, but if you've ever hit rock bottom you know what that is. And hopefully there's a small percentage of us because it's not where anyone really wants to find themselves, but it's a defining moment for sure. And it definitely was, um, for me, it was the moment that changed my life in five minutes, as I like to say. Um, and now it's, it's been 10 years. So, um, 2008 is when my big moment hit and it was really the perfect shit storm. 
to be honest. Um, we were in the recession as a country, as everyone probably remembers. So we had just lost our house in the, in the bubble. We had uh, just filed bankruptcy. I had twins that were a year old and a five-year-old son. I hadn't been working for two years. So like literally things could not get worse already kind of, um, in almost every area. The one area that I just had never thought to really question was my marriage or my relationship. I'd been, um, with my high school sweetheart, we'd been married for eight years at that point. Um, and together since we were 16 years old. So for 16 years and it just, it just had really truly never crossed my mind that anything could happen to our marriage because it always been the two of us against all of this other external stuff that was going on in our life. Right. Um, and it was really crazy because the day that changed my life, I had been listening to Oprah. Like I always did. She had, um, her regular show on at that point. Right. And, um, every once in a while she would have a show that I would, that didn't really, I didn't feel like it really related to me or whatever. So I would kind of like mute it and then go about like my household chores and take care of the babies or whatever. And that was the case this day because this the show was on how to know if your man is cheating. And I was like, ah, I don't need that. <laughs> you know? um, mute, go, go fold laundry. Um, and I remember as I was like folding the laundry, it was still like uh, putting up the captions that, you know, the host or the expert was saying like tip one, tip two, whatever. And um, I remember just glancing up and seeing the tip like, if he turns his phone over or if he can't find his phone, that's a really good sign. And it was just in and out. I don't even think it really stuck in that moment. I just kind of went about my day. And then uh, he came home, made dinner and all that. And it came back. It was just like a reader board, right? Like a flash reader board. And I always tell people we have this intuition. It's our internal life coach that no one listens to. <laughs> you know, we're always arguing with it, thinking we know best. And it is like holding that red flag in front of us like a reader board saying, please pay attention to me. I'm trying to tell you something. Um, and that was the moment that I got it. And all it was, was like, where's his phone? And it was like the second that it wasn't where it normally was. I knew everything. I don't even know how to explain it. It was just an instant kind of like flush over my body. I knew it all. I knew what I was going to find. I knew who would be with. It just, it was crazy. It was a very out of body experience. Um, and at the moment he was in the shower and I just remember, going in, finally finding his phone, which was, you know, in the bathroom. And it was a text message from, uh, his mistress and said, I can't wait till you're finally free, all mine and no more sharing smiley face. <laughs> oh man. Um, and in so many ways, it was the most perfect text message because it was really beginning, middle end. It told me everything I needed to know. You couldn't lie your way out of something like that. Um, I knew it had been going on a long time. And, you know, as a woman, I really knew what I needed to know in that moment. Um, and I went in and I turned the water off in the shower and he was all sudsed up. I said, like, get the fuck out of the house. Don't ever come back. And, um, my life ended in five minutes. He literally put his clothes on soaking wet, threw his ring at me, kissed his kids goodbye. And that was the end. Wow. So that was rock bottom. <laughs> um, it was literally everything that had kind of been leading up to that for the last year, just in finances and stress and having twins, you know, all of that really just culminated in this moment where everything that I had ever known, that I had ever planned, that I had ever thought of just crashed, you know, and I, um, I remember that night I was literally laying on the hardwood floor and I'd been crying for so long. Like my face was sticking to the floor and I just kept on thinking like, it can't do this. I don't know how to do this. I don't even know what I'm supposed to do tomorrow. Like it was that basic because I didn't know anyone who had ever, ever gone through anything like this. I mean, you gotta remember this was before social media. There was no Facebook. Right. So the only people that you knew were literally the people you worked with, your family and the people you grew up with. And maybe the two friends you met as an adult. So like your whole radius of what you knew were maybe 50 people wide. So I didn't know one person who had been through a divorce, not one single mom. Definitely no one talked about infidelity if it ever did go on. Um, and so I didn't have any frame of reference of like, what does a person do? Like, how do you get up and go about it? And, and I just kept on running all these scenarios in my mind because I'm a bit of a fixer. And no matter what I was running, it was like, nope, that won't work. Nope. That one, you know, and then I always say there was like that same kind of intuition or, or voice or whatever you want to call it 
it just started arguing with me a little bit. It was just like, well, what if you could, what if you can? And it just, everything I said, I couldn't, it was just like, what if you could? And that was it. And that's all I needed. I just needed another challenging kind of perspective on maybe there's a way. And I clung to it and it really kind of was a turning point for me. Cause I think it could have like anybody gone one way or the other. Yeah. And that's the, that was kind of the defining moment of like, get off the floor, bitch, and figure it out. Yeah. Well, uh, one of my favorite parts in your book, Hustle, Believe, Receive, which is one of my favorite books, everybody needs to go get it, is how you talk about, uh, like, like, I believe you give like a tennis analogy. When something yeah. bad comes in, you hit it like a tennis racket going out. And I feel like that's something that a lot of us really, really struggle with is that negative self-talk. And in that moment, when you are at rock bottom, and all those why nots are pouring yeah. down on you. I always talk about your why versus your why not. If your why is big enough, you can handle when all the why nots yeah. strike. But you're in that moment of decision, figuring all that out. And that negative voice is sitting there just adding to the heap. And yep. you're able to flip your mindset and start digging out. And so yeah. where did your why develop to, to start moving forward? Where did that fire come from? Because I feel like that's something that a lot of people really struggle with. Totally. I mean, the, the most basic and absolute truth answer is my kids. I mean, there was like the, the whole time I was on the floor trying to run scenarios, it was like, how do I take care of them? You know, like, how do I provide for them? At, at the moment that this happened, I didn't have $5 in my bank. I didn't realize the car was in his name. I didn't realize I wasn't on the checking account anymore. Those were all just decisions that we had made together over time because they made sense for one reason or the other. It wasn't a big deal. But it really was a big deal when I no longer had access to anything. And I, I couldn't, I didn't have money to go to the store and get, you know, formula or diapers for my kids. So that was all I cared about really in the moment. I don't even think that I was that obsessed until later when it started really sinking in kind of what had happened between him and I. It was really like, I'm their mom. No one's going to take my kids. <laughs> like, right. you know, like if I can't take care of them, then. I mean, that's the end of the world for me. Right. And so I better figure out how to take care of them. And I, at the point when this happened, you know, we were laid on rent, the water had just been shut off. So like, I knew I couldn't stay in that environment. I knew I had to like, you know, move and get my own place and all of that type stuff. And so that's what I was, that's all I cared about was trying to solve that. And honestly, if I didn't have that, I don't know because it would have been very easy to drop into depression to start drinking too much or, you know, various ways that people cope with traumatic things. But for me, it was like, I don't even have time to think about that, <laughs> you know? Yeah. And then as the days go on. Then of course the whole magnitude of it starts sinking in and you're dealing with all of it together. But I think being focused on something so primal as I better figure out how to feed these kids, how to get a roof over our head and then how to get a job, and then the more I started doing that and the more I started realizing that thinking about what was going on in my life was really dangerous, like really, really dangerous. I just, I couldn't handle it. It was way too much, way yeah. too dark, too messy. Um, our divorce was very, very nasty immediately. Um, so I couldn't go there and to kind of give me something else to think about. I just started fantasizing. I started daydreaming like I did when I was a little girl. And that was my world when I was a little girl. And I, I lived off my daydreams. And so I just went back to them. I hadn't done it for 25 years, but going back to them and started creating a whole new life in my mind of what I wanted to do, what I wanted to be. Didn't ever think any of it would happen quite honestly, and didn't really care. It just made me feel better. It was something else to think about. And it saved my life. Right. Like it saved my life because now I know that what you focus on comes about. Right. Now I know that when you focus on anything, it creates your future. I didn't know that then, but thank God that I took all my focus off my current situation and put it on the life I wanted. And 18 months later, I started living that life. It just started coming to life. It was insane. It was like 3d style. <laughs> and that, that's amazing. And, and, you hinted at it, but I want to dive deep on future boards. So tell us the story of how, like, your, I, want to, I want to know about your first future board that you put together and the story around that. And then when you realize you're actually starting to live the things that were on that. Uh, so let's dive deep on future boards. 
Yeah, absolutely. So the very first one I had done, I was actually uh, still married and I was pregnant with the twins um, because Oprah had had all the secret people on, right? Yep. Um, this was quite a while ago now, but, and they had done one on vision boards. And I was like, you know, I, I was nine months pregnant at the time. I thought I had the time. There's magazines around, you know, <laughs> so I ripped out a bunch of stuff. I put it on this cork board. And I remember my husband at the time had come home and, and he was like, what is this? Like, this is crazy. We're in the middle of foreclosure. Like all of our stuff's packed up. We can barely afford to eat. Like, why do you have pictures of New York city and Paris and times square and all this, like, that's ridiculous. And I was like super ashamed. I was like, Oh my God, you're right. Like, this is, this is crazy. I should have been doing something to try and, you know, fix this. (laughs) Um, and so I was really embarrassed and I hid it. I, I think I put it either under my bed or in the closet. And it was when we were moving into this tiny, our first tiny little apartment, the kids and I, um, that I found it in all the stuff as we were moving. And I remember just keeping it. I don't, I don't think I put it up right away. I put it probably under my bed again. But when I finally did find a job and I started like realizing I needed to pump myself up and feel better every day in order to get through the day, I found that, that board again and I pulled it out and I just took it with me to, to work. <laughs> so I didn't have the balls to hang it up in my own house, but I went and put it at work. Um, and it really, really was the start of how I was able to get those daydreams, you know, visualization, whatever you call it to me. I think daydreams, everyone can understand what that is. Everyone knows they can do it. I think a lot of people don't know if they're doing visualization right or shit. It's really just a daydream. (laughs) Um, And visuals help anybody to daydream, right? It gives you something to focus on that you can turn into a 3D picture in your brain. Um, anyone can do it. A two-year-old can do it. So being surrounded by them at work was huge because all day long I looked at them. I didn't consciously think about them or consciously be like, Oh, I really want to do that. How do I do that? It just was there. It made me feel good. And every time I looked at it, I expanded the the visual in my mind and in my mind I was there. And, and that is, you know, the moment when it started just coming to life a year and a half later, um, when I got my first business trip to New York and I just remember, you know, getting this assignment a week in, in New York, all paid company Amex, like the whole nine. And I, I came back to my desk to pack it up and I looked at, at the board and realized that there was two pictures of Times Square on it that I had put back when, you know, I was pregnant with the twins back when we had absolutely nothing. So I knew right then that it was not a random coincidence. Everyone else was like, it's a business trip, bitch. Like, you know, I was like, no, 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 no. I manifested this. I don't know how, but I did, you know? So, and it was that realization, you know, like, I really feel like had I let that moment slide, like most of us do, we don't ever even catch half of our manifestations because we're so in our shit. Had I let it slide, I probably would not be here right now, Yeah. but I did recognize it. I didn't take it for granted. I didn't overlook it as just a business trip. I knew that it could not possibly be random that I just so happened to be in a job that wanted me in New York a year and a half after I had first started thinking about it. And that's, that's super important. I really hope that, um, all of your listeners start to to realize how much they are manifesting. They're just probably not paying attention because it doesn't come in a giant bow that says, hi, I'm your manifestation. (laughs) I wish it did though. That'd be awesome. (laughs) Like you've got yeah. email from your manifestation. <laughs> exactly. So one of the things that I love to talk about when, you know, I love talking about the law of attraction, but I love saying that you can't spell attraction without action. And you talk about this in your book, like it's called hustle, believe, receive. Right. So the hustle is a key component. It's not just put it out there. It's put it out there and get, go after it and, you know, be present. Exactly. So can we talk about that formula a little bit as far as like, if somebody's going to put a future board together and apply your HBR method, uh, how do we get started with that? Yeah. So a real quick, um, let me give a definition of, of what a future board is. Cause I, I think immediately people just think it's a new word for a vision board or a dream board. And I want to be really clear that it's absolutely not. Yep. Um, It is a direct visual representation of everything that I've previously identified I want. And that's a big difference. So that's why um, I don't do magazine parties. I mean, I've done them in the past because clients were like, 
what do we do if we're at a workshop and we're not putting anything together? But, and now I don't. Now I'm like, no, I want to teach you how I do it because I want it to actually work for you. Um, to me, magazine stuff is super random. You're just yeah. going through, you're letting Vogue or whatever tell you what you want. Um, and that is not how we do it. So um, now what I want people to do is to think about what do I want? What do I want my life to look like? What do I want my house to look like? Why do I want it to look like that? How am I going to feel in it? You know, so we, we go through a lot of work. We actually go through, if I work with you one-on-one, um, the future board comes in at step five out of eight. So that comes in at week five if we're coaching, right? So everyone's like, Oh, let's go make a, let's go have a party and make a board. I'm like, <laughs> Bitch, you don't get there till week five. <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> um, but that's why it works so well. So uh, the shortest definition of it is it is a visual representation of the life you're daily creating. And that's a big, a big distinction. Um, so yeah, I mean, uh, now I forgot what your initial question was, but <laughs> well, I, I'm <laughs> we glad, do, well, I'm glad you, br- you brought it there because I feel like that is an important distinction to make where, you know, it, it, what you are teaching is different than a dream board, than a vision yeah. board. And, and I like that you, you know, you, you talk about that in the book. Um, but if we want to start applying this method, yeah. you know, especially for people, like a lot of people are listening to this and they're like, I'm really struggling with weight loss. I want to create, I want to manifest health and relationships and confidence and, you know, confidence in myself, confidence to speak to other people, maybe meeting a significant other, things like that. Like how are we going to apply hashtag HBR to yeah, yeah. the, uh, to, to this yeah, whole and, area? And thank you for bringing me back to your original question. Cause I don't want to leave that one on the, on the table. It's such a big one too. So, um, the hustle, right. How, how to actually apply the things that you're learning. Um, and for me, that's, huge, 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 huge. It is the first word of the title of the book. Right. Um, and it kind of had come from that phrase, ask, believe, receive, which I, I just didn't agree with. I've really felt like there had to be more to it than that. Um, and so the hustle is a lot of different things. Truly changing your mindset is a hustle. That's a daily hustle. And, um, what I mean by the word hustle is work. I think a lot of people have weird definitions of it or different definitions of it that, that might be negative for me. It's just my work. It means that I'm scrappy. It means that I'm willing to figure out a thousand different ways to get a job done. If 999 aren't working, right. That's really the, the, the difference. Um, cause a lot of people will try 45 things and it doesn't work and they're like, okay, I guess it doesn't work. And I'm like, you still got like 800 more to try. So, you know, let's go. Um, but then there's also what I call a daily hustle. So if you have a goal, say to lose weight, um, you should have a list of like five things that you can do every single day. And most of them should not be that huge, right? They should be pretty minimal so that you can start to build your confidence. You can start to build a routine. You can start to feel proud of yourself because you're accomplishing them. Um, let's say maybe one is drink, you know, you want to drink 10 glasses of water a day, right? If you're on a weight loss journey maybe that's too much. Maybe you normally only drink three. And so 10, having a goal of 10 all the time and failing it half the time is going to make you feel like crap. So maybe this week you have it for five and every day you hit five, like it's a party and you reward yourself or whatever. So that can be your hustle too. Um, one of the things that I think really can demotivate us very quickly is if we have a really big goal. Um, let's say I want to lose like 40 pounds or something like that in six months. And, you know, in five months, you've lost four or 10 or half that, or, or even really close to it. And you're just a couple pounds short. All of that feels like failure. If your goal was 40 pounds and you only lost 38, all of it feels like failure. And it's just, if we can flip it the other way and start to reward ourselves every day and start to put a hustle together every single day that, um, makes us empowered instead of drags us down. That's huge. So absolutely. You need the vision of what you want to look like. Um, and it needs to be clear and exciting and you need to surround yourself with pictures of it and whatever else, um, you can visually, but then you need to every day commit to doing the things that will get you there. It's never a magic formula. Yeah. I remember you know, my audience knows about my, what I call my lifestyle rehabilitation statement. That's what I read every morning, every night. And I wouldn't let myself go to bed at night. And, you know, I'd read that and be like, all right, what did I do today to move the, the needle in the right direction? Even if it's just one percentage point, but you know, it's like, if there's a giant tree that you want to chop down, 
you may not get it that with one big powerful whack at it. You got to chip away every single day and eventually the tree falls. And that was kind of my methodology. And all of a sudden you're waking up and you're feeling like you're manifesting this thing that you've been ah. focusing on. And it's, it's pretty damn amazing. Building uh, momentum that whole time. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. So with your future boards, do you think you could give us kind of some like best practices of like what makes a really good future board or what should we avoid? Cause I can already in my mind going, well, I don't want to print everything out and put it up. I, maybe I can create like a Pinterest page or something like that. Like what are some, some errors yeah. in, in future boards and what are some best practices? Yeah. Great question. Um, so there's some big ones and they're ones that, that most people do, um, that you really want to avoid. I would say the very first one is don't put any quotes on your board and that's, the number one thing that people do, I mean, if you just think about it from a super logical perspective, how is a quote supposed to manifest? Yeah. Like, what are you asking the universe for? <laughs> you know, like the quote is like, be strong. Okay. So what is strength going to walk through your living room? <laughs> like, what are you asking for? You know what I'm saying? Um, and, and my other big, big problem with quotes is that they're just a cop out, right? They're, yeah what somebody gravitates to who has not taken any time to actually uncover what they truly want and spent any time tr even trying to visualize what that looks like. So our, our quick thing is like, Oh, quote, quote. Yeah. That, that speaks to me. I have no idea why, but off we go. Um, and I actually have a visual that I had put up um, on my Instagram not too long ago where I put all my boards for the last eight or nine years that I've done. And long before I knew better, I had a, a board that was like 60% quotes and if you just see, and I check mark all, everything that is manifest off all these boards for all these years, about 75 to 80 percent of my boards manifest. Like I've lived those moments, I've put them on Instagram, I've smiled in that picture, like lived it, right? This one board with all quotes, there's like seven pictures. Because like what else could have manifested, right? So that that's a big, big, big one. Um, the other big one is don't use magazines don't use magazines, take the time to find out what you want and then go find a picture. That's exactly like the one that's in your mind. Yeah. Exactly. Don't settle. You know, if you love a modern minimalist dream home and you're settling for, you know, the picture in garden and home, that's like a colonial, they don't match, right? We need the energy to match. We need the vision to match. We need the desire to match. We need all of that stuff to line up. That doesn't line up. It's totally out of place. So that's a big one. <clears throat> and you do have to have a physical board hanging on your wall. You do. Um, and here's the thing. It feels really uncomfortable and awkward and kind of like you're naked um, <laughs> because all your dreams are displayed. Right. But that goes away in about a week, a week and a half, yeah. you know, like anything else. And then being surrounded by it has this magical component. You don't have to stare at it. You don't have to meditate on it. You don't have to do any of that. Your brain will just get to work on that stuff. Every time you see it, it will subconsciously, um, start to build those stories in your mind. And, and that's what you need. You need to be around it. Um, having said that, I do a ton of Pinterest trainings too. And so Pinterest is where I find all the pictures that wind up on my future boards. Um, and I have 6,000 pins or something on Pinterest. So I, I go crazy. Um, and I've discovered that I've manifested a ton off there, but I spend a lot of time on there too. <laughs> you know, I don't think just seeing a picture one time and you know, going about your day is going to do it. I mean, that's, I spend hours, hours and hours, probably weekly yeah. <laughs> on there. Yeah. So now you got my, my, my wheels turned on this here, Sarah. So <laughs> Good. like one of the things I'm really working on right now personally is manifesting uh, an ideal schedule that I'm really in love with like workflow. I'm, I'm very much into family time and time invested with my children. Like and I was at a recent mastermind where we stood up and we all did our goals. Like it was all financial. Like I want to make a million dollars. I want to make 5 million. I want to make $10 billion. And I stand up and I go, I want to take my kids to school every day. I want to pick them up every day. I want to work about six hours a day and I want to play the rest of the day once they get home. And right. everybody's like, uh, right. what's your financial goal? I'm like, whatever it takes yeah. to do that. That's what, that's my financial goal. Yeah. So I've got this ideal schedule. If I'm going to put that on my future board, do I need to put, pictures or can I actually type out the schedule that I want to live and then put that or both? Like what's your recommendation there? That's, that's a good, a good question. And the example that you gave is perfect. So people come to me all the time and they're like, I want to make a million dollars. And I'm like, and so what? 
can you please tell me what the hell you do with a million dollars? Like, and they can't, they have no <laughs> idea. The very first thing they'll say is like, I'll pay off debt. Well then why go get the million dollars? Like yeah. if that's, you know, that's not exciting. You're not going to be excited. Like you'll be excited for 30 seconds when you do that, you'll feel good, but then you'll rack the debt back up and whatever, <laughs> you know? Yeah. So if that is, um, kind of your only motivation, you're not going to get very far. And the first obstacles that come at you when you're building a business or whatever you're trying to build to get to that million dollars, you're going to be like, this is too hard. And it is right. So you have to have way deeper connection to goals that truly matter to you to ever kind of make that happen or to ever turn that into something. So the biggest thing that I always teach everybody to do is imagine I handed you $5 million dollars. And I said, you couldn't just go out and buy materialistic things and you couldn't pay off debt. Could you then tell me what your life would look like? Could you tell me what your work hard, play hard would be? I want to know what the play hard would be. So, you know, for you, you have all of that going on. You have the freedom and flexibility. Maybe you have a trainer that comes in. Maybe you have a chef that's preparing gorgeous meals for your family. So that frees up your time, right? Maybe you're in your dream house and every morning you look at the ocean or wherever your location is, right? So you start to build out what that whole life looks like. We don't care about the dollar amount because first of all, we don't want to put a limit on our dollar amount. Yeah. We don't want to put a limit on it. So um, all we want to do is define what it looks and feels like in its optimum state because that is what will draw us to it faster. So for you, you absolutely want to put pictures of all of that. You want to put pictures of family being able to do things that they would do if money was no object and time was whatever you wanted it to be in its ideal state. Right. Um, and that would be the same thing for how your morning would go. You could e easily start to visualize what that would look like and you yeah. just find the pictures that match the vis visualization. And then you can start to see why this board is so life changing. Yeah. And why it's so unlike anything else. Yeah. And when you look at it, you're like, oh my God, that's my life. Like, that's what I'm working for. Yeah. So now, no matter what comes at me, no matter how hard it gets, and trust me, it has not been an easy journey. I'm only two years into being an entrepreneur. I left corporate to do this full time. It has not been easy at all. It's been very scary. It's been as hard as anyone else's business is to start from, from scratch, you know? Um, but when I need to be reminded of why I'm doing this, all I have to do is go look at that board and, and know that I would never give up the opportunity to have that life come to me. One of the things I, I love about being in your universe of information is that I feel like you're taking us on the journey with you and you're very real. You're very raw. Uh, and so like a couple of weeks ago, you had a very emotional Instagram story. Like you're on there crying, you know, and yep. I, I think something was going down with like books, book launch yeah, stress yeah, and things. Yeah. So a, like what, you know, that's, that's an awesome thing to be that being willing to be that vulnerable and to, to share like that. So is that, is that something that you feel like has helped you build this brand and, and connect people to you? Or is that something that you're, that comes naturally to you? Yeah, it's, it's the only thing I know how to do quite honestly. And I, I feel like I'm very, real and tangible ways. It's not what most people do in my space for a lot of reasons. Yeah. I think I would be 10 times more financially successful if I wasn't that real. And if I just told people what to do, that's the honest truth. I feel like if I sold people hard on stuff, on stuff that I know will change their life on programs that, that I've worked very hard on because they work and all that stuff, but I, I don't, it's not in me. I, I show, I lead because that's the only thing I know how to do. You know, I didn't, I was in corporate before this. I was this, uh, you know, a single mom who went from food stamps to building a career to, you know, now trying to do this entrepreneur thing full time. Um, I've never been like, I'm the guru. I know everything. Let me just tell you what to do. I'm like, this is my life. This is how I'm dealing with it. These are the obstacles I just faced. And this is how I just overcame it. Um, and I think it's absolutely what has built my platform. Um, and it's the only way that I will ever do what I'm doing. Cause it's the most often it, it is me. Um, but I would say there's definitely voices that come at me or that it even are inside my head. That's like, you could just be this polished, all professional pictures up guru. Yeah. And you be 10 times more financially successful. And I fight with it a lot because that isn't what I set out to do. You know, I set out to always, in fact, it, my whole thing started with the blog, my blog thought stories life. 
Um, and it's what initially built everything that I have now. And my slogan on it to this day and from day one, the very first day I put up a blog when I didn't even know what a blog was, <laughs> is a chick on a mission to prove anything is possible for anybody. And that that's all I've ever set out to be. I'm here to prove it. If you want to know how I did it, happy to show you. Yes. That's one of the reasons I do this podcast because I love telling stories of quote unquote ordinary people doing extraordinary things and making extraordinary impact because that's what's relatable to yeah. the, the the average person that's listening in and be like, wow, damn, if, if Sarah can do that and turn her life around like that, I can do that too because she talks like me. She seems like yeah. me. She cries like me, you know? <laughs> so when it's real, it's real. Yeah. You know? yeah. I, I think especially women are really, really hungry for other women to be real and vulnerable yep. because I think guys may have been doing this for a while, but it's, it's different for a guy to show up in a workout shirt and talk, whatever, you know, it's, it's a whole lot different for a guy to do that than for a girl to, to get on Instagram with no makeup and a workout shirt looking like she just woke up. Right. Yeah. Like a whole different situation. Um, and so I really feel like women weren't being, weren't, it's terrifying. Right. So weren't able to even ever show that side of themselves till maybe like a year ago or a year and a half ago. It's, it's been pretty new, you know, two years ago, I was using filters on everything too. <laughs> Not that I don't use filters anymore, but there's a lot of times when I use none, but I wouldn't have ever done that four years ago when, yeah. when it wasn't acceptable. So I think, um, a lot is changing in, in how we're connecting to each other. Um, that is really good. That is really real and really earnest and true. And then what I always want is people to to see me putting a dream out there, me showing what I have to do to get there, me showing the tough times, the, yeah. the crushing times, how hard it is, how hard, hard I'm working, how ugly it can be when you work, and then how glorious it is when you get to that moment um, and when you're living the reward um, of that. I always want to show it all, you know, because I wish I'd had an example like that when I was trying to figure yeah. it out. Yeah. So yeah. when you were in that moment a couple of weeks ago and you were doing the tearful Instagram message and just being raw and real, what pulled you out of that? Like, what did you go to, to change state and to build that, that mental momentum back up? Do you, do you go right to the vision board or do you have like a little process that you like to do to kind of get your mojo going again? Yeah. I mean, every feeling that we go through always stems from our thoughts. And I know I've learned so much about, um, my own thoughts and about, and coach so many people on it. Um, that now I have tools that I, I know I can go to even, Saying that and, and knowing that there are days when you just don't want to, when you want to feel it. And I always tell people it's fine to, to wallow for a day, yeah. to feel the crush of whatever disappointment you just went through. Like give yourself, let it out. Like give yourself a day, not longer than three. Cause then you start a whole new momentum shift and yeah. that moment take you honestly three months to get out of yep. like it, it has a delayed reaction. So three days in a shit mind state, can honestly predict your next six months and it take, it can take six months to get that momentum turned all the way back around. So as soon as you start to get your own timelines down and just kind of feel that out and check that out, um, you're much more motivated to be like, okay, I'm going to feel this right now. And then I'm going to snap back. So one of the things that has really helped me snap back is guided meditations. I literally just search for them on YouTube. Um, depending on kind of like what I'm feeling at the moment, if it's stress or if it's whatever, there's one for everything under the sun. Um, and I'll take either 15 minutes or an hour, depending on like what my state is at. Even if I should be hustling my ass off, even if I have a million things I got to do that day, I actually did a half hour guided med meditation this morning before we hopped on. I was like, no, I want brand new, fresh energy. Like, you know, and yesterday I did a big one cause I had this, my huge event this last weekend, my yeah. annual event. And there was so much stress leading up to it. And after a big event, you have so many mixed feelings. You know, you want to be really hard on yourself because there's all these things you wanted to do better or different or whatever, that it's hard to soak in all the glory of, of the moment that you've worked so hard for. And I, I really realized that that's where my mind was. And I was like, this is, this is not good. I don't want my mind here. I want to, I want to live in the joy of thank you universe for lining it all up and, and letting it happen the way that it did. It was beautiful. Um, and so I did like a two hour kind of meditation. I was like, I'm going deep 
all this energy is getting cleansed and it was crazy. I woke up and I was like a new person. Yeah. So, um, there's several things. Music is huge, huge, huge. I listen to positive hip hop, but I know some people think that it's an oxymoron. It's not, trust me. Um, <laughs> whatever your thing is, put it to use, start using your tools to change your mindset and get in there and do it even when you don't freaking want to. So, I, one of the things that I kind of preach to my audience about, and I'm glad that you, you kind of brought this up a little bit, is that a lot of times we don't really sit in that moment of gratitude when we do achieve a goal. It's just kind of like, check, next goal. And it, it's yeah. like, so what, what I've been working, obviously I did my big weight loss thing, but when I set that goal, I also set a goal to be mortgage-free in my 30s. And last year, I achieved that goal. And... Like I'm still sitting in that. Like every time I come down to my podcast bunker down here where I'm at, I'm just yep. like, damn. This is my house. <laughs> exactly. Like I sit in that. I'm like, oh, I, I love yeah. I love this. So yeah. any advice around like especially if they're using the future boards, yeah. like do you keep them around? Like do you review them and, and like and just experience that and kind of almost like as we're going there, we're we're trying to affirm it and visualize it happening. But do you do that in reverse at all and go back and just look at gratitude in, in reverse almost? Yeah, no, that's such a good point. Um, so the future boards now I have um one wall in my bedroom that's dedicated, it's basically like wallpaper. <laughs> so the whole thing nice. is a future board. I have my my master future board, which is the main one I teach everyone how to build. Um it's step five and hustle receive, and it's the whole book of the new book that's coming out. Um but then I have ones that are travel related, ones that are career related and, and other ones. Um, so I see those first thing and last thing every single day, yeah. every single day. Um, and then probably two years ago, two or three years ago, maybe all of a sudden I realized, and, and maybe I'm the only one, but I, I realized that all the arts or like pictures on my walls and stuff was like 10 years old. <laughs> Like, I don't know if anyone else has ever been that way, right? Like just the pictures that are hanging on your walls, like it's not something we update all the time, right? Um, and I also realized that I didn't have any of the pictures up of anything I'd ever manifested. I, I don't know why. It just had never crossed my mind. I, I think part of it I felt like, oh, would that be narcissistic, right, yeah. to put um, celebrities with my book because I've many, many, many who've endorsed my book and, you know, that have done tours with me and things like that. I was like, is that weird? And then I watched Oprah and saw saw in her office that the whole thing was plastered with all her Emmys and all the pictures. And I was like, fuck it. If Oprah can do it, I can do it. Right. And it was crazy because now I have what I call my reality wall. And I'm just going to, I don't know if you can, yeah. can you see the wall behind me. Yes. Um, and then it goes up the entire stairs from floor to ceiling. And my, my why we were talking about this earlier, yep. right? You got to know what your why is. Um, my million dollar definition kind of to our point earlier too, is I want to travel the world with my kids. Like that's the magna cum laude. That's everything for me. Um, and I have, we've been to like seven countries and there was like no pictures of that on my walls before. And I was like, that's the ultimate in my book, the ultimate thing I could ever manifest. Like that is the thing I'm most proud of, more proud of than my books, more proud of than anything on the planet. And I didn't have any of it represented in my house. And so when I realized that now it's, it's everywhere and it's crazy how much better I feel like just looking at it makes me smile. It brings back the memories of those moments. It makes me grateful on the days when I do not want to be grateful. Um, so for like this big event, I'm waiting on the photographer to send pictures today and I'm going to totally frame many of those yeah. and surround myself with them so that on days when I feel stressed, like I did leading up to that because live events are stressful. I will remember how glorious and amazing and joyful the moment was that I lived in and I yes. want it around me. Yes. So yeah, I, my house, the pictures that hang in my house are my reality board. Yes. Cause every single one of them I've manifested. It's that's awesome. I love the transition from it's a future board and you manifest it, it becomes a reality board and we use that for gratitude and just it, it's a, a cyclone, a vortex of awesomeness and positivity. Yeah. Uh, I yeah. love that. Now, speaking of awesomeness, the book is open and ready for pre-order, correct? So hashtag yep. future boards. Yep. I, I can't 
like this thing can't come out fast enough for me, Sarah. So can we please just get it out already? <laughs> My God. I know. That's how I feel too. <laughs> so yeah. uh, how do we get our hands on this uh, with the pre-order and uh, you know, what's the best way to dive into your whole universe? Cause I, I will put all your, your info, your blog, your book links. Uh, I'll even like, you had a great podcast interview with Natalie Jill a, a while back. I really yeah. love that interview. I want to, I want to uh, put that link in, in the show notes as well. Uh, but what's the best way to get the book and to dive into the Sarah Centrella universe? Yeah, so um, a couple quick things I want to say about it. One is I'm I'm so excited about the new book, Hashtag Future Boards. It's coming out by Simon & Schuster, which for a girl who taught herself to read at 13 years old and makes me emotional to think about it, um, hadn't read a book till I was like 22 years old is incredible. I don't take that for granted at all. <clears throat> But see, gratitude does this to you, right? Yeah. Um, and we just found out that Target will be carrying it, which is just wasn't honestly even in my universe of future board stuff because I don't I don't know how much everybody knows about publishing, but Target only buys best sellers that are proven best sellers. They have a very small uh, book section. So pretty much every book you see is books you already knew existed. <laughs> it's unheard of for them to buy a book that hasn't even come out yet. So that's how the universe delivers greater than your expectations could ever be. Um, but you can pre-order it now on Amazon and on uh, Barnes and Noble. And another thing I want to say about it is it's so amazing because the, um, the editors let me shoot the cover, which was my personal reality board that I put together. And so every picture on the cover of the book are pictures that I took of moments that manifested that initially had started as a picture on my future board. So there's pictures of my kids in Italy and uh, in London on, on the cover. And so it's just really special. And I want people to understand that it doesn't just work for me. There's a bunch of stories of clients, uh, people who read the first book and then, you know, did the future board stuff. Um, it will work for anybody. And, and even in our conversation, you can tell that it's so different than kind of the way people are looking at it before. Like, how couldn't it work? <laughs> Um, so yes. And then hustably receive is coming out in paperback. It's re-released. Um, Ed Milet, who's a very good friend of mine and an um, amazing podcaster as well, did the forward for the new one. Um, so both of them come out the same week in July and they can both be pre-ordered on Amazon or Barnes and Noble. Nice. I can't wait. And hustle, believe, receive is a game changer. So that's uh, available right away. Get it and d get through that. And then that way you're ready when hashtag future boards is ready yes. to go. So, uh, do both of those. Now, Sarah, I like to leave our audience with a little bit of homework. I like to, to leave them with momentum. We've inspired them. They've got a lot of thoughts, you know, uh, we got, the, we got their gears turning a little bit. Yeah. So let's say that there's somebody that's listening right now. Let's say it's a single mom. Let's say she's feeling like, life is happening and it's bearing her a little bit and she's kind of in that moment yeah. but now this is the perfect time she's connecting with your message you get to sit down look her in the eye and give her some action steps just to, to initiate momentum which for me i feel like that's the hardest yeah. part so totally. what are you going to say to her yeah so i think one of the fastest easiest simplest things that every single person can do to start to shift that momentum in their life and it truly doesn't matter if you're starting from rock bottom with not a penny to your name or whatever your case is or 200 pounds to lose or whatever your, your situation is. Um, or if you just want to up your game, right? You've hit kind of a plateau and you're ready for, for something more to push you. Um, spend time on Pinterest. I'm going to give you a huge tip on how to find the pictures you want. You put the whole um, uh, phrase in the search bar and you follow it with the word photography, and it's going to filter out everything else and just show you gorgeous pictures. And that is going to start your start allowing your mind to start thinking about something other than what you're going through right now. It seems too simple. And trust me, everything I teach is that simple. It's so basic. So if you sit on your couch and even if the TV's on or the kids are on or whatever, and you spend 30 minutes, the first 10, you'll still be kind of tensed up and whatever. And after 30 minutes, you're going to start to see a whole new world of possibilities and start saving them, start putting them on board and allow a vision of your future to start to come to you. It's huge. The moments you want to live, those are great to look up. Vacations you want to take with your kids. So if anything you can do to shift your mindset out of what you're dealing with today and on to a moment you want to live, 
or a life you want to build or anything, doesn't matter, the faster that's going to come to you and the faster your life's going to change. It's that easy. Hell yes. Sarah Centrella. I... <laughs> I, I just appreciate you so much. I know how much you have going on. Like you said, you just finished this massive event, uh, which looked to be extremely successful. So congrats on that. But uh, I just appreciate you investing some time in me, in my mission, in our audience here. It really, really means a lot. And uh, like I said, this is an interview, a conversation that I've really been looking forward to. And I'm psyched I get to meet you at Growth Now Movement Live, our buddy Justin's event. Uh, we will combine our awesomeness uh, out there in Reading, Pennsylvania. So my friend, Sarah, thank you. Thank you so much. I appreciate you. Yeah. Thank you so much, Aaron, for having me on. It was an amazing, amazing chat. Thanks very much. All right, everybody. Now it's time to get out there and implement that moment of inspiration, that, that action step, that one thing. It's time to get into action and get out there and own it. Every meal, every workout, every day. I will see you on the next episode. So, are you fired up to start your own future board yet? Uh, make sure you guys get her new book. Pre-order that sucker. Hashtag future boards. I'll put the link in the blog and in the show notes for this episode. And one more quick reminder. We are launching our next free seven-day habit launch challenge on June 10th. You've got a couple of weeks to get signed up. Go through the welcome videos. Get set up in your accountability group. It's free. It's seven days. And this time, we're focusing on mobility body care, body maintenance, being able to wake up and feel better. You're going to love the, the mini course that I've put together, the easy to do online follow along videos. And of course, I'm in the accountability groups, supporting you, motivating you and helping you out and adding value however I can. So head on over to habitlaunchchallenge.com and join in on the fun. We'll see you there.